My name is Wiley Hundertmark. I'm a senior in the Earth and Environment Department at BU. When I started in Lucy's lab a couple of years ago, she asked me to work on this length of our project. She'd been making measurements with a couple of other undergrads, looking at the carbon going into trees and the carbon coming out of the soil on BU's campus. So Professor Pamela Templer and I, we have some idea about what the university's fossil fuel emissions are. So how much heating is used, how much electricity is used on the campus. But we wanted to look at another piece of that, which is what the landscape of the campus is actually doing, the area that's not buildings or cars. I spent, I don't know, hundreds, at least hundreds of hours drawing little tiny polygons for each discrete unit of land cover we have on campus. Like literally every single thing on campus that physically is on the earth was, was accounted for. So I'd go to the like Marsh Plaza and I'd draw a big polygon around the brick and I'd label it brick and then I'd go to the BU Beach and I'd carefully draw out all the lawn and I'd label it lawn and then so I did that for the, the Charles River campus and then all the other campuses and ended up with around 5,100 unique polygons for land cover. So we can look at that and say, okay, well BU's Charles River campus, for example, has a lot of paved surface, a lot of building, a lot of concrete, a lot of brick. Things that don't sequester CO2, don't absorb CO2, but also don't release CO2. And so what we are interested in is what we just call biogenic emissions, which are the carbon that's coming out of the soil and then the carbon that's going into the trees. So we have a little PVC collar that gets pushed into the soil. Uh, it's left for a couple of weeks. And we put this little PVC cap that seals the collar right on top of the PVC in the ground. And that little cap connects to a machine called an infrared gas analyzer. And we can see changes in carbon concentration over time. And then given a flux per unit time, we can calculate over the course of a day, over the course of a year, how much carbon is coming out of the soil. When it came to trees, we use dendrometer bands, which is basically a metal belt that's put around the tree and you can calculate the change in the carbon stored within the tree uh, over time just by looking at how much larger that band gets. And what we found was a little bit counterintuitive, um, where we think about green space as sequestering carbon. Unfortunately, our campus is a source in its landscaping. Things like mulch that was being applied and slowly decomposing, that's releasing CO2 to the atmosphere. And the grass and the management of all of that was releasing more than the trees were taking up. And so if we are able to minimize mulch application in places that we don't need it, then that'll go a long way. And the other good way to do it would be planting more trees. And so we met with the folks from facilities that are actually in charge of managing the, the campus. And we told them some of what we learned and their response was, okay, we'll change that. And I think that making those changes happen on a scale where it's immediately applicable is what's the most important thing. And I liked that tangible application of it. That's what really draws me to this. Because it's not just about the numbers, it's about how you can apply it. And that's what I love and I think that's what I kind of fell in love with about this project was this is what we want to learn, this is how we're going to apply it. Once we can apply it, we've, we've answered our question, we've fulfilled our purpose and that's and we're going to better the university as a result, you know, whatever, whatever the conclusion is, that's what you want to do with your science.